Welcome to a special episode of Bravo and Blaze. It is an honor to have two amazing ladies who co-host one of the newest top charting podcasts. We signed an NDA. Please allow me to welcome Amanda Lifford and Anne Maddox. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> top charting so podcast. Nice. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> You are. You guys are doing so amazing. I'm so proud watching your you guys do your podcast. I love it. Oh my You're God. one of the pioneers we aspire to. Oh my yes. gosh. That's yes. such a nice thing to say. Okay, Amanda, <laughs> I wanted to start with you. So you used to be on The Vile Files with Nick Vile. Yes. Can I just tell you something? Sure. I think I might hate Nick Vile. <laughs> like, not intentionally. Like, I didn't know who he was until Scandal. And I'll tell you why I think I might hate him. For one, during Scandal, I'm like, who is this Nick Vile guy? He keeps, I don't watch any dating shows. I think they're so weird. I'm like, what? Why are these people? Like, Love is Blind, I start watching some of that. And... I'm like, why did she just say, I'm not going to say I love you until she's engaged? Like, what is happening? Like, that's just so weird to me. So I don't watch The Bachelor, any of that stuff. Although I did date two guys like a long time ago. I dated two guys that were on Bachelorette before and they were both like kind of douchey. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that made me not want to yeah, watch that. Anymore. that that checks out. That checks out. <laughs> yeah. A douchebag will paint stuff. They really do. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. know who Nick is. And then Scannable happened. Nick is interviewing every single person from Vanderpump Rules, like the entire yeah. world. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then <laughs> turns out he's straight. He's a white guy. I'm like, ah, oh, the worst. And then top it off with, He's never watched the show. <laughs> Are you kidding me, sir? But then, okay, and I was like, maybe, you know, whatever, let, I'll let it go, let it go, Zen Jen, whatever, <laughs> Zenny Jenny. And then Zenny Jenny. he gets front row seats to watch Tom Sandoval be tortured on special forces. <laughs> I mean, all of these things. <laughs> made me not like Nick Vile really, but I wanted to know from your standpoint, how did, what can you tell us about your career path and how you got involved with Nick Vile in the first place without breaking any NDAs, obviously. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I, yeah, I moved to LA after college and joined all the little job listservs and through one of those email blasts heard about like it was kind of it was one of those like very mysterious job postings where it's like <laughs> pop culture figure um oh. yeah so I applied and it started out as a role that was really social media heavy which was awesome because I think you know like trying to figure out what from a podcast would make the best social content I think really honed some like analytical skills and whatnot yeah. Um, and yeah, Nick was always really uh, generous about wanting, you know, people to advance. And for me, I, I do a lot of improv. I love to gab. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of slowly got the opportunity to have a presence on air. Um, and by the time I left, I was like, you know, a, a sidekick co-host moment, um, which I loved. I love it. And so... And we know that you are the former assistant of Tom Sandoval and you've been on Vanderpump Rules quite a yeah. lot so far. <laughs> on last yeah. week's episode, there were discussions about Tom potentially firing you versus you guys taking a break. It seemed like it wasn't very clear. Then we also see Tom Sandoval on the after show talking about serving papers to you for... <laughs> That was just like, I'm like, no, he did not. But then today <laughs> I saw that there was like something, I think it was reality T on Instagram. They said that you have officially been hired by Ariana and Katie for something about her. Is that true? Can you tell us about that? Wait, Amanda, can I tell them about that? <laughs> I think... It might be a, like, you'll have to stay tuned throughout the season to find out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. <laughs> how did you two connect and how did everything come to fruition? Ooh, um, well, Amanda and I did improv together at the same show and we kind of just immediately fell in love with each other. Like, oh, you're so oh, funny. Let's hang out. It yeah. is so That's funny. That's my dream. <gasps> Amanda's so funny. <laughs> no, but I feel like I'm like low-key kind of picky where it's like, there's a lot of people that I will smile and laugh with, but like, Anne was one of the people where I was like, at first I was like, I actually don't know how to process all the things I'm feeling because I think I'm maybe a little bit angry about how funny this human being is and how like oh radiant and kind. And then obviously I was like, I love her. But I was like, it, the first reaction was kind of a visceral, like, how is this possible for this combination <laughs> of attributes in a human being? Like, this is amazing. <laughs> Amanda, that's the best compliment I've ever received. Thank you so oh much. That's so sweet. <laughs> And that ditto really everything. Mm. It's it's so yeah. easy, and I yeah, it's like it's so nice because I think like you know out the gate I was like this person's so funny I really fuck with her, ah! and then you know we found out we both worked for yeah. men in the reality TV space. <laughs> yep, and, so... and we also live literally across the street from each other. Amanda sent you... me a a yeah, she sent me a party invite, and I was like, is this a joke? Like you're. <laughs> It's like same street, one number off. And then it turned out she like, like my bedroom window looks into Amanda's bedroom window. <laughs> so that it was like meant to be. That could off creepy. <laughs> you're what? stalking you're me. You're inviting me to your party that's right across the street? Okay. <laughs> no, that is so cool. You guys are like having a friend's moment. Like Joey Chandler, Monica, Rachel. Yes. I love this. 100%. Gosh. Would you guys ever do a reality show? Oh, I would. I would do anything with Amanda. Like, you don't even have to ask. I'm in 100%. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a perfect fit. You guys are literally working together now. You met at improv. You have this like super meet cute moment of how you met. Right? Oh my God, I'm obsessed. I do want to go on The Amazing Race more than anything in this world. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Let's and Anna's got to speak Japanese. Go... Oh my God, please. Yeah. <laughs> it was, oh, we'll be at the first real. thruple on The Amazing Race. It will be iconic. Yes, and with yes. the high school in Let's Cairo. Like that's something, I, there are so many things where I'm like, Anne is humble and like is never going to brag about herself. So there's like many different areas where I'm like, I need to spread the good word about all the things that this woman does. In addition to her being like a comedic gem, she like, she grew oh up in Japan, God. she went to high school in Egypt, like she has just truly like the biggest worldview and she's so cool. Amanda. Sorry. Oh my god, my Sorry. head's gonna pop you. off my head. No, 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 no. You're blowing my ego too up like up too much. I can't <laughs> handle it. <laughs> You're gonna start having an affair soon. <laughs> Wait, so when No, guys... I don't want that. When did oh, you guys sorry. first meet? What year? Like how long has this friendship been going on? It's fresh. How long? Like two years? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one and a half? not yeah. too long yeah your ships in the night for a while like where it was yes. like i would see her do improv and be like like notice her but then it, i think it was like a it was it maybe like six months until we like actually had a conversation yeah and we're like and we finally were like i love you i, I just like, i think i just walked up to amanda and was like i'm obsessed with you <laughs> Wait, but you're so funny you make me mad <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if you guys went on the amazing race, who would be the strong partner Amanda in like <laughs> <laughs> immediately Amanda? <laughs> I'm from Boston, like, and I feel like I have this you like kind of competitive. <laughs> thing yeah, really I'm not very life. competitive. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, should we just like check in with our emotions right now? <laughs> should we She's a, a lover. I'm a fighter. We balance each other That's out. <laughs> great. Yeah, that is a great balance. I'm, I feel like this is something we should manifest right now. <laughs> right? I'm in. I'm in. <gasps> or traders as a team would be really fun too. I was just gonna mention the traders. So right? we love. How much do we love the traders? Love, love. Would you guys go on the traders as well? I to I totally would, but I have one one request, which is I I I rather Weed? when they no 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 I ra I actually rather not. <laughs> but you know that. <laughs> That one challenge um, where the bugs fall on you, mm -hmm. I I can't I can't do it. No. Like I would I would 
do the rats like there's always like rats in one room and then oh, bugs no. in the other Hell way no. rather chill with the rats than the bugs i can't do bugs <laughs> that's I it paid them to get out of that room i don't like i wouldn't even <laughs> care about the money i'd be like get me out of here this is torture why would yeah. you do this like i, I don't yeah. mess with that fear factor type of stuff i, I hate it Amanda? i hate it could you do it i mean okay so i she could she could she could <laughs> i want to be really transparent i am a referenceless woman <laughs> who is trying sh i'm fighting for my life to catch up on tv i did not have cable growing up i blame everything else on that i have oh, only gosh. seen the australian traders and part of that oh. season and i loved it <laughs> but, oh, I, would but I feel like that. it was you know i feel like the accents make everything better i don't know i just feel like it would i don't know i I, you know, like the, the two wolves, like, I think it generally like try to lean into the more like easygoing, like I love people, love chatting side. And I worry traders would bring out like the Boston in a scary, right. scary yes. way. Yeah. Do you think you'd yeah. be unhinged? Because I think I would be the most unhinged. Like <laughs> I, I shouldn't ever even think about going on that show because I would totally ruin my life. What does unhinged mean to you? Like, are there any specific like, scenarios you're wild, envisioning? Wild, crazy, like just reactive and like dramatic. You're the traitor, you're the traitor. Yeah, you're the traitor. Like, spiraling nonstop, like running around like a crazy person. That's my version of fun. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'd probably be kicked off immediately. They're like, well, you're... You're not a traitor, but we're going to sacrifice you. They would kill you because they're like, she's too likable and powerful. Oh, thank you. That's a compliment. I like it. It's influential. <laughs> they do. They kick off people who are influential. Ooh. Okay. Maybe I should play the, like, pretend I mean then. Pretend yeah, would I'm you like be able to be a traitor? I, d I know I can't. I just, I can't. I hate, I hate lying. I hate tricking people. I, I don't know. It's just like maybe but very doubtful i think i would fuck it up immediately it seems stressful <laughs> yeah what it's too you, stressful Amanda? would you be able to do it oh uh, i i think i would have a mental breakdown <laughs> if yeah. i did do it successfully like there would be yeah. a cost to it yeah. that would yeah. come towards the end i think yeah. yeah i think the manipulation part would be too hard i would i would I would feel bad that I'm like lying to people and then taking all their money in the end. I would do it yeah. if I if I could like end up splitting the money with whoever's left. If it I, were all men, I feel like we could do it, Anne. Because like for me, I think there's a yes. me that yeah. like tomboy played soccer. Like one of my favorite experiences as a kid was like playing soccer with the boys. They thought I would be dog shit and be like, I'm gonna score a goal on you. So I think that yeah. I would be able to dig deep <laughs> and yeah. potentially yeah. pull it off. But like I would feel yeah. bad lying to women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put me in a room way. of villains. Oh my yeah. gosh, totally. I would not feel bad at all about lying to a man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaking of men, <sighs> that lie a lot. Well, actually, I don't know that much about Nick Vile. Does he lie? Is he a liar? What's he like? I don't. <laughs> he's a very private person. He's he's a he's a straight shooter, and uh, you know, I. <laughs> I do have I, to say, I have a lot of respect for what he accomplished on Special Forces because I, as much as I joke around saying like, oh my God, he's so privileged he got a front seat to watch Tom Sandoval be tortured at the same time, <laughs> like I would have been out day one. I wouldn't have been able to watch all of that because it wouldn't have lasted yeah. as long as Nick did. And I was really impressed. I knew he was going to win. Like when he was, I'm sure everybody says that, but like, I was like, there is no, like this man will not give up. Like he is relentless and he wow. will like push himself like over, like he is just really like when he wants to get something done, he gets it done. Like he is forceful wow. and like he can. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds very hetero white male of him. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like the gay, like the little bisexual with the nose ring being like, mm, reality TV union, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, we signed an NDA. What is your plan with, we signed an NDA? What do you want to accomplish out of it? What is like 
your brand? What are your core values? Um, well, we definitely want to pass the mic to the people who are kind of unseen in the Hollywood world, like the the assistants who kind of do all the work but never really are like told to hide in the shadows. Um, and are they yeah, told we want to spotlight hide? them. They're told I to was hide. literally told, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, sometimes you have to run and, and get something for your boss, but then they'll be shooting. So I have to like, just run into a closet and shut it and like, wait till the take is over. And then you, no. you kind of creep out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. yeah. That's very dehumanizing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's part of the job, you know. <laughs> There's something about the assistant life where it's like this combination of like, there's certain tasks where it's like just and this is nothing to do with any boss it's just the nature of the job where it's like you are meant to be an extension of another person but also invisible and like zero maintenance so there's just yeah. like this like weird like am I a person but also I'm in these rooms with all these famous people and I think being in comedy in LA all of our friends are assistants and just like it's like the assistants know what's happening. Like the assistants know yeah. who's a good person. They know like how shit gets done. They know who is in charge. And so part of it is like, you know, it's also like, it's a role where there's so much trust involved. And I think like, you know, not yeah. only is it that we don't want to get sued. Like I genuinely would never want to violate someone's privacy who's let me in. I've, yeah. you know, like seen firsthand, you see how celebrities get burned and how they like, as a result, like have to live this really, get like guarded life where they're so mindful of who they let in so I would never want to betray that so it's right. less about being like let's expose all the shit we saw and more like mm -hmm. as someone who's seen how this machine works how can we now as we see other stuff from this machine come out of the woodworks like analyze it and yeah. you know with like right. the perspective yeah if they are seen they're not heard from and so you know we want to give them a chance to kind of speak up and have the mic <laughs> If that makes any sense. No, yeah. I love that. I didn't know that most people who were assistants were also in comedy. And I find that to be so interesting and it makes so much sense because you probably need to have a sense of humor to deal with some of these people, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. It helps a lot. It definitely yeah. helps. <laughs> and improv specifically when it's like your job is to assist this person in all areas of their life or like many different areas. And so it kind of makes sense that it's somebody who feels comfortable in like unknowns where it can be kind of an unpredictable job, depending on who you work for. And like, I, you know, there's like assistant support groups on Facebook and you'll see all these like crazy postings where it's like, my boss needs a passport, like overnighted to Zimbabwe. To Z and then someone's like, I actually know the person who works at the embassy. Like, it's just yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. I, my mind, I love true crime and the whole like Randall Emmett, Randall Neck Ives. Yeah. yeah. I thought I was so sad for his assistants whose like lives were destroyed because of what Randall did. And I don't know, is it like, is that normal in, in Hollywood still to this day? Oh, um I would say yes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just no. I'm just gonna call it like it is. Yeah. That it happens all the time. It's everywhere. And I think yeah. that's probably a part of why we wanna, you know, allow assistants to speak up because it's it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. And it's completely acceptable and that's bananas to me. <laughs> like it shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. It, and yeah. it, depending on your boss, like, I think, you know, I've been so, so fortunate, like I've been in the podcasting space, but like you look at the culture at like management and talent agencies, and it's just like, there's this like intensive pay your dues, like expect to get like screamed at and degraded mm -hmm. or like in some cases, like literally have shit thrown at you. Yep, and yep. because it's glamorous Hollywood and because the people you're emailing are like Jennifer Coolidge or whoever else, like, I think there's something about like the glamour of the world that allows a lot of other really nasty, dark stuff to transpire. And this like, you're replaceable. Someone else will do this. Someone else wants their shot in Hollywood. Like you're betting on yourself. A million other people are just moved here from Iowa. Like you're not special. And so I think it yeah. does just like create this culture where there's like such a slanted power dynamic. 
Yeah, I told this story in like a article, but so sorry, I'm repeating it. But I definitely had that situation where I was an assistant to an executive and she wouldn't allow me to go to the bathroom. And I got my period all over my pants. Like every time I got up to go, she would scream at me to sit back down. And so finally, I like ruined a pair of pants because I was so afraid of being screamed at by this woman. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Yeah. The Devil Wears yeah. product could have been a documentary. Like, I think people yes. think it's exaggerated. And then you move here and you're like, oh, shit. It's oh, no. not yeah. really. Yeah. So do you guys feel like, I mean, I'm 42. So I remember the days when I was young and there were no iPhones and people <laughs> didn't have a production studio in their pocket. But nowadays we all do. And this kind of behavior that you're talking about really should not be able to fly anymore, especially with yeah. like the Me Too movement and all of that. However, I think Hollywood, because we're seeing decades of this abusive and toxic environment living and breathing and thriving for so long, it's hard to like chip away at it. But, and then there's like people like us who are like, hey guys, listen up, <laughs> you know? What do you guys think about that? Because I, it makes me sad to know what has gone on for so long, but it also at the same time with technology, I feel hopeful that maybe things can change someday. And especially with people like yourselves, what do you guys Aww. think about that? Oh, and do you wanna, or I can, whatever oh, you want. You, yeah, I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, oh my God, sorry. My brain goes a million different places thinking about no, it's a lot. like, I was just, I was thinking about this, like when, how going on Instagram now, it's like, I don't necessarily follow a ton of like hyper political accounts, but it's like, you know, especially, I know this was happening way before 2020, but I think in 2020, there was a huge uptick in sort of using social media and harnessing it as a power, like as a cool. place for activism, mm -hmm. but there's something really I, it can't be healthy for my brain to go from like a good friend getting engaged to like genocide in one scroll. I know. And so, I know. It is rough. Right. And so it's like, it's like on one hand, I feel like it's in some ways it feels good that there's less barriers to entry in all capacities. Like whether it's like you breaking into the entertainment industry and it's like, you can make really funny videos from your home and like make it happen. Or whether it's just like people who might not have like gone to a protest now getting to see this access like on their Instagram feed, et cetera. Like in some ways I think that's so positive, but in other ways it feels like it's a lot to process for people. It's, yeah. And I also, I don't know, I think sometimes there's this perception in Hollywood for some people of like, haven't we gone a little far? Like people who, I don't like, like take the comedy community, for example, like, where a lot of theaters have scholarships that are like available to BIPOC or like queer students. Some places, some places like they're like, eh, it's women still qualify as underrepresented. Other ways are like, no more white women, too many. But like, you know, and and I think those programs are so necessary. But I think when there's younger people who are in these hyper liberal environments, I think sometimes people almost view them as like redundant when it's like no 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 like these are essential like this is not gone too far like this is still like it takes so long to pass over like leadership and to actually funnel people into the industry and let them rise in the ranks to positions of power like it's essential we have these like entry-level things I'm sorry that was a huge rant no 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 no, no. I I agree if if I could add on to that like I feel like when you're young and starting out in this industry you think a lot of people tell you this is the norm. It's weird, but it's the norm. And you just kind of have to like deal with it in order to pay your rent, whatever function, get have a job. And, and I would and I do remember being told that and then it wasn't until finally talking to other people and meeting other assistants to be like, Oh, this is not <laughs> this is not the norm. This isn't how you should be treated. Um, and I kind of want to make that gap go faster, quicker. And I think by by just talking about it and like, you know, podcast kind of format, we we get to that, have that discussion and that discord. And then, you know, maybe things will start changing. Like it starts with a conversation. So yeah, I don't know. No, definitely. <laughs> Did I go? Man, 
No, that's yeah. that's exactly it. And that's like essentially why I started Bravo and Blaze. It was to bridge the gap between mainstream pop culture media and what I consider the true cannabis industry as an extension of health and wellness. And when I started, it was during COVID, they weren't really talking about weed on Bravo. And now they won't yeah. shut up about it. So They're I having weed dinners. <laughs> I got it. No. Yes. <laughs> Upside down jackets. <laughs> oh, and and they're all having, I'm sorry, two milligrams. That's not going to do shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me personally, I'm on two milligrams now. Like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do. I do admit um, that I did. So I work a temp job right now, and it's very tiring. It's I love it, but it's very tiring. So I did smoke a joint as soon as I got home, <laughs> and I was like, I'll probably be fine by the time I do, you know, Bravo and Blaze. But I do still feel a little high, so. <laughs> Just like warning. You. Oh, you're totally fine. No issues okay. Here. So I'm like a little in my head right now. So okay. I just started thinking about something now because you now that I know that you guys are in improv and comedy, and we're talking about technology and how things are changing. What do you guys think about Matt Reif? Oh wait, who's Matt Reif? Sorry. A, oh my god. He's oh, a stand-up comedian. He started as a TikToker. And he's known I do. for his crowd work or whatever. The pretty guy. The guy who's yes. like, I'm so hot. Like, what? You're judging me. This is discrimination. <laughs> he's a cis no. male. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, he's a cis male. He totally is. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, just, I, I mean he, he would not be able to make a, an hour of being in the BIPOC community, a person of color, like he would not survive. I don't think he could. Okay. If he's already complaining with all that privilege. I know. <laughs> like, it's I don't crazy. think he could spend a day. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like not to be a colossal bummer, but like the domestic violence joke just like was oh, yes. in his special. It was just like not funny. And I think there's like, I think there's ways to take subjects like, that can be incredibly sensitive and I think mm -hmm. there's ways to find humor in them but oftentimes that's because you're coming from the perspective of like you're not punching down yeah. like you are using you are somehow like using the punchline as the like the flaws in society as yes. opposed to like and so I just it's just stuff like that where it's like damn dude like people like comedians when they go whenever a comedian like whenever a white dude goes on a rant about cancel culture I'm like the issue is that you're not funny. Like that's truly at the root of this. And also there's so many men who are like, I can't say anything anymore. And it's like, you're doing a whole lot of talking about how you can't make any jokes. Haven't heard a joke in a while. Like right? oh my nobody's gosh. like policing. Like it's like this idea that people are like policing you or being like the PC police. It's like, we're not laughing at your shit. And yeah, maybe we're also saying like, I found this problematic for X, Y, Z ways, but ultimately like you're a fucking comedian, figure it out. Like, stop complaining yeah. and whining and saying, why isn't the audience liking me? Like, write better jokes. Like, yeah, like, Steve Martin did, and he was famous in, like, the oh, 70s. I so, like, I know, he's the best. I love I him, love too. Steve Martin. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's like, it's doable. It's been proven to be doable. So, just yeah. do it if you want to do it. Don't stop complaining. Be a, well, get I out just, of my face. Sorry. I'm calling out Matt Reif specifically because... I feel like he got to where he is now. He's selling out tours, doing That's stand up. Crazy. That's not even good, in my opinion, compared to yeah. other people who deserve it. Like, look at Joe Coy. I think he's the most amazing comedian. He oh, makes me laugh and cry. And Aww. he is, I mean, he tells a story about how Netflix turned him down and they would say, like, no, we're not doing this. He put in his own money to shoot his own special. And they still called and were like, no, we don't want it. <gasps> but wow. then he, he, he had to like prove himself, you know, cause he doesn't have yeah. that privilege that like Matt Reif has as this younger generation comedian who makes a couple TikToks and then is selling out, you know, these places, these big venues. Yeah. Right, and, and like to Netflix Matt Reif's specials. credit, like it seems like he really like he found a niche, and it like my understanding of it, and like I I might have heard this on like Giggly Squad or like uh, like I no way taking credit for this idea, but like it seems like kind of people's take is like he found this niche of like kind of commenting on like 
making fun of joking about like women and like kind of like you know like the vocal fry voice like <laughs> that kind of thing and it seemed like you know he clearly found something that was effective and that was making people laugh enough to like grow to prominence but like it seems like the issue everyone has is that he's now like acting holier than that or like better than when it's like don't turn your back on the people who like yeah. made you viral and famous dude yes exactly I mean it's hard I mean we're all creators right and we all have like our own thing that we do and our different media formats that we communicate through so it's it's hard to, especially when you're on your own, to kind of find your voice and find your niche. But you two have each other. Tell me more oh. about, I mean, you guys already seem like you're like soulmates, but tell me about working together <laughs> on We Signed an NDA. Like, what are the highs? What are the lows? What are you looking forward to? Do you have goals? Any specific goals? Oh, yeah. Our dream of dreams. At least we talked about this, but like, if a year from now, if we could be at BravoCon doing like a live taping of our show, that would be just, we've made it. Like that would be heaven. I've, I would reach Nirvana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, I, yeah, I feel like at this stage in our show, we're, we're so lucky because we have like amazing, like, you know, right now, like Paradiso and like our producers Maddie and Brendan are this like awesome like kind of force that are like really helping like guide us um and so like that's been really great I think to have these like more like official people because I think like I don't know I think Anna and I's ultimate goal is that we can be like so fucking silly and like the whole show can be tangents but it's like we also do feel very passionate about what we want to do with this show which is platform assistance and like kind of get that lens so I think the thing that feels like the most exciting and like that's the biggest challenge is like how do you like translate all of the like goofy silly fun stuff like and as my best friend like us shooting the shit like how do we translate that to a podcast while also making sure we're like you know like like the, like doing both the kind of overarching more like analytical point of the show while also like having lightheartedness like I think I just have like a, a an authority complex where if I'm like there's an assignment to be done then like sometimes I can get like my, my I'll be like very like more kind of like tense and less like free flow yes Sandy than I want to be so I feel like for me like that's mm -hmm. been the biggest like thing that I'm so excited to be like working on and figuring out and like Anne's a perfect person to do it with because she's like mm -hmm. the best person to be silly with so it's like it's oh, an yes. awesome incentive to be like okay Amanda figure out how to like make sure you're like getting through like the stuff that's really important and meaningful while also like giving yourself the chance to just like follow the fun and get goofy yeah yeah the the high is like when we get to you know, record and be goofy together. The low is the actual work you have to do. Like <laughs> editing. editing. We are both like, oh God, like one of us has to take it this time. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? It's so much work. Who knew podcasting was so much work? Yeah. It's also hard. Cause it's like, it's really hard for me in editing to be like, wait, I don't want to cut anything that Anne says. Yeah. Or like, it, like it feels weird to be like both like, I don't know, it sort of feels like judge, jury, executioner when you're editing your yeah. own stuff. It's like, well, I yeah. would love somebody else's perspective on like what lands the most. Cause like, it feels so, so bizarre to be like, okay, so this episode's a little long. We clearly have to cut tangents. Like whose stuff do we cut? Cause I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, also I have, I all have like kind of the opposite issue where I'll hear my voice and I would just be like, just cut me out completely. <laughs> like, I can't, I sound so bad. And I'm not, no, I don't like this. I think <laughs> that I've been talking to some people about that lately because I still hate the sound of my voice, but I've been doing this for years yeah, now. And I have that. it's funny when new people start, they're like, I really can't get over this. And I'm like, just know you're never going to get over it. You're always going <laughs> to hate no, it. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. No, you just like, I thought there was like, one. you have to like, just, I don't know, go numb over it. Like, just yeah. forget about it. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm used to that. I could do <laughs> Everybody that. Everybody hates their own voice. But yeah. I promise you, nobody else cares. I promise. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I did see one comment one time that was like, Amanda sounds like a demented chihuahua. And I was like, points oh for God. creativity. That's a great descriptor. 
like that's evocative language (laughs) do you guys do video too no we want to we'll get there we'll eventually we're fighting for our life with audio (laughs) and one step at a time we love to do video but baby steps baby steps i was i was just asking because somebody today said i was sarah silverman's sister oh I see it. yeah but they yeah. were saying it like in a negative way but i was like i no. am okay with that yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, i would be honored oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it's a tough i mean how do you guys do you read all of your reviews your comments all of that stuff? we're struggling yeah we're struggling <laughs> with that right now at least i'm struggling with that right now it's it's chaos right now at first you know, when I first appeared on Vanderpump, all the comments were so nice. It mm-hmm. I would like cry nightly and oh. just go to bed just feeling so warm and cozy and happy. And now the trolls have come out of the woodwork. Um, I often get like, you look like the Joker <laughs> or what? someone made fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, that was a there was like a couple comments and um another one was like uh i mean i posted about my overbite comment which was <laughs> i just someone made fun of my overbite and i just responded um my dentist says i have a julia roberts smile <laughs> <laughs> like what do you want me to do about it it's my face like i'm i'm sorry i <laughs> did you guys prepare yourselves before you started like hey we're going to have to put ourselves out there. I mean, you're in comedy and you do improv, so you already yeah. kind of are used to that, but it's it's different, I'm assuming, you know, yeah. when you have yeah. live feedback versus. Well, I, I was not prepared. Yeah, I didn't think anyone would ever care enough to really comment or dive dive into it and and now i'm pleasantly surprised pleasantly <laughs> i'm i'm surprised i'm just surprised. simply surprised yeah. yeah yeah i feel like because i i think being on the vile files it was something where like of course it's like i felt so lucky to have that opportunity and it was always like contextualized as like i am here to kind of supplement my boss's visit vision for the show and so i think there's ways where it's like you know i really appreciated that certain things like if I if I had a different viewpoint on it like you know that that kind of challenging or sharing another side of things was like welcomed in certain capacities but I also think like you know it's like it's with any show it's like stuff gets edited out and so sometimes it's hard because it's like if people it's hard it's it's, you know it's like the reality tv thing like you don't have control over your own edit and so I think you know, the vile files, it's like Nick has worked so hard to have this be like a very big show with a really wide audience. But I think there was a degree of separation where it's like when people talked shit about me, like, first of all, it was usually about my hair. And I was like, true, I don't do it. <laughs> like, I, you know, it's like, I know that I know that I don't spend and yeah. I, and one day I could spend the time to do my hair, but I'm simply not going to do that. But like, yeah. I think there was also, it was helpful being like, well, this isn't like, I don't have creative control of this thing. Like I'm here as a very supplemental role and so I think it's with this show it feels a lot more vulnerable because like I do get to really like bring my full self to the table talk about whatever yeah. I want to talk about because now I'm you know that's a boss privilege and so now like as yeah. we're kind of our own bosses um so I think in that way it like feels a lot more targeted and I also think for both Anne and I in a, like an improv background like I think we're both very like I think we genuinely like other people and like connecting with people and really like, I don't know. I think both of us try to come at interactions with like new people just being like, awesome. Like, uh, like there's inherent value here. And then obviously sometimes it's proven otherwise, but finding that balance of like, we really do want to take into account feedback and like, we want to understand what people think. And we want to use that as like data points and like ways that we can grow. But then there's also like, okay, but some of these people, it is not, in good faith this feedback is not in good faith this is yeah. like somebody yeah. taking out some shit that's happening in their marriage uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 they like i'm trauma. sorry <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. like my teeth are big what do you want me to do about it like <laughs> i need my teeth to eat food i don't <laughs> like they, yeah. they and it's it's weird because they they tell you about this like how there's trolls and you know like reality stars get a lot of comments and hey or you know it it swings like at huge degrees but you know i was not prepared 
for what was to come. Like, Jenny, have you ever, was there ever a comment that was like maybe on the, not necessarily negative, but like constructive side? Like, can you give an example of a comment that's maybe not fully positive, but that was actually like helpful or additive in some capacity? Or do you think it really is just like, sometimes people have, they got to get it out and they get it out on you and it's, you just got to ignore them. I think um, there's a, the majority are people who are triggered and just, they just emotionally dump <laughs> mm, without, yeah. and it, it actually says more about them because what triggers you says a lot about what you're sensitive to, right? And what you're sensitive yeah. to usually comes from a place of like, trauma or so something that you're tied to yeah but um there there are some people and you will find like you can tell when you find these people who are actually genuine people who do want to help and give constructive feedback and the feedback that they give you might not be something you want to hear but they can deliver it in a way that's not offensive and you can yeah. sense that they actually do care. And yeah. I'll take that feedback and I'll that'll resonate with me more. But when yeah. it's like, like I posted something where it was a clip of Ariana talking about like, oh, he wants me to look like a big old bitch or whatever. And I was like, yeah, that's me talking about, you know, starting my podcast <laughs> or whatever. And a lot of people, Ariana haters, we're like, yeah, you both are or something. And I'm like, that doesn't phase me at <laughs> yeah. all. Like, do okay. better. <laughs> like, if your burn does not even have a sizzle, then it's not worth my time to even respond. Yeah, that's, for me, that's like being called a snowflake. I'm like, yes, yeah, I am. I'm we very sensitive that. and extremely wonderful. Yeah, I told you this. Like. Well, another thing about, you know, the troll comments is I realized early on that I do have to embrace every part of myself and who I am if I'm going to put myself on a platform like this because yeah. you're exposing yourself. And that's why a lot of, well, not a lot, but some podcasters or people on Twitter or on Instagram with these big accounts, they will never show their face. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's because, I mean, I get it. There's different reasons. And I know some people are just like truly frightened of people violating their privacy. But yeah. at the end of the day, I'm like, they, anyone these days could really, if they really want to, they can find you or find out who you are. It's sad, yeah. but it's yeah. the truth. And so I just decided when I started I have to live the most authentically in a safe way, you know, so that I'm yeah. not exposing myself, but just know who I am and stay true to that. So that if anyone yeah. ever throws any daggers at me, like it doesn't affect me because I already know who I am. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. I, I do also want to add like doing improv, you're, you're like, used to a certain kind of audience where you're so putting out you know what you think is funny on the spot which does feel a little more vulnerable to me than like a scripted you know mm -hmm. comedy si situation <laughs> i don't know For what i'm sure. saying um yeah so, so yeah so it kind of builds this like i don't know this tough skin where if they don't laugh you you push harder like you you like try to force yourself to find that thing that would break the audience yeah you're and, like i'll um, get you I, my pretty if not this exactly a different bit. <laughs> yeah yeah i will keep going like until until i get you <laughs> i think a lot of I'll improvisers like yeah i'm gonna get you <laughs> um we have that mentality so you think you're tough but then you know one comment could really haunt you <laughs> all night long being like what do they mean i think i'm nice do they not think I'm nice? Like, you know, so. I think that's part of it. The thing that's like uncomfortable for me is like, it's yeah. weird for me to like entirely write someone off as being like nothing. You have no value. And it feels yeah. like that's kind of what you need to do when someone says something really fucking nasty about you is you just need yeah. to be like, yeah. I don't value your opinion. You have no value. But that's a really counterintuitive thing in like in-person interactions. So there's this yeah. like it doesn't make sense in the brain at first. 
I and know. I feel it just seems like it's like exposure therapy where it's like you get burned enough times that you're like, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I can't and there's also this. Oven. Right. And there's also this sense of like, oh, I don't know this person. They've never met me. So like, what is this even, what are we even doing right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. cool. Like, that's what you think. Great. All right. Bye. There's like, this, I don't know. What to do. I saw this amazing Australian comedian, comedian named Anne Edmonton do a stand-up show once in like truly fucking 2015. But a joke she says that I never forgot was she was like, when it comes to people liking me, I'm going for a hundred percent, not 99. I'm going for a hundred. Like I am going for a hundred percent. And like that deeply where I was like, oh boy. I, I've oh. Been out. <laughs> Can I share one of my favorite troll experiences? Yeah. It was this woman. She, she commented, she went on to like my Instagram and commented like, um, it doesn't seem like she's that smart. And then somebody else was like, I don't know, like, have you listened to her podcast? And then she was like, mm, I'm just saying she presents like she's not smart. And then so I responded to it being like, LOL, look at this lady who's like insisting I'm stupid. Like she <laughs> will not let it go. Uh, and the lady immediately deleted all the comments. I was like, oh, well, you got her, you won. <laughs> ha, ha, I gotcha. If you're listening now. <laughs> I love what do you that. think? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it is a really, truly satisfying feeling when you've won against a troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. You're like, yes. <laughs> you think you could get me? <laughs> I had yeah. this whole, like, it was like a seven day battle <laughs> with marathon runners. And I was like, you think you can run a marathon? This is my marathon. Yeah. <laughs> my internet stamina will blow you to pieces and my nipples don't even change. <laughs> and he did. And I fucking won that shit. And I loved it. Yes! Hey, can I ask what it was over? Like, did you say oh something about mar gosh. the marathon community? So I think it was like Betches or something. They had like a marathon reel or whatever. And I don't even know what it said. It was funny. It was making fun of marathon runners. And I used to run I don't really run because I'm not a runner but I've always had so much respect for marathon runners I'm like wow that's amazing like I could never do that shit <laughs> but then I commented and I said something like I don't understand why people want to run for no reason like <laughs> I was just like adding on it was like improv I'm like adding on to the joke you know and they yeah. went off like they just would not stop call me a drug addict like all this <gasps> oh my God. i'm like oh hell no you just you brought it let's go so let's every go. day every day i'm like to the marathon runners <laughs> <I'm> still <laughs> running <laughs> Where are you? I love that. Yeah, That's call me when you have your knee replacement. <laughs> I'm like, wow, they I I always loved marathon runners, but apparently they're miserable people. Yeah, they're very intense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I think it's like something that my boyfriend said at a concert that kind of blew my mind was I, I felt like there was this woman who's I did not like the energy she was putting out. She's being very territorial, like very. And I think like, you know, I think it was like a band, like, you know, it's like definitely a band with like more of like a queer audience. And so I, I think I, I feel like part of it, like I think she was kind of giving my boyfriend stink eye because she's like, fuck these straight people. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm a bisexual. I know that doesn't count for anything. <laughs> but, um, but like, but my breaker was like really unfazed with it. And he's like, you know, like I, I think she's just trying to like protect something that's really important to her. Oh, and like that, yeah. like framing it as like, oh, your, yeah. your like protectiveness is yeah. what's going on for you right now. And even though it kind yeah. of seems like unhinged, like, like, why are you going off on me? It's like yeah. you're being a mama bear over a community yeah. that is meaningful for you. Right. I mean, I do have there. that with. Yeah, with Taylor Swift, when I, I do get that feeling of like, but why do you hate her? <laughs> She's amazing. Like, <laughs> like you're simply not important enough. <laughs> Have you listened to 1989? It's a great album. <laughs> I just, yeah, what I feel like people need to be neutral about more things. Or yeah. like open to uh, change. Like, I don't know. I just like, I don't really, I think we have this playbook for like, 
let's call people out for egregious bad behavior, which I'm so there for. But I don't think we really have a playbook for like, what about the stuff that's like far lower on that spectrum of being problematic? So it's like not as horrible, but it's still wrong. Like, like more like corrective, like how do we actually like talk to someone and engage with someone in a way that makes them want to like change or see our perspective or like understand that maybe they did something they didn't mean to do and like to just be like oh yeah my bad like it just feels like the oh my bad thing isn't really an option as much anymore it's like you're fucking canceled and some people are like (laughs) so fucking defensive about stupid shit yeah yeah Yeah. do you think that's what it is they're afraid of being canceled hmm like, what is wrong with Tom Sandoval? Everything you were saying, I'm like, I was, I was applying it to Tom Sandoval. I'm like, yeah, why can't you just say my bad? I, I was literally of- thinking about that. That's so funny. You said it. You said it. We were all thinking it. You said it. I think it takes a lot of, like, confidence to admit that you're wrong. Yeah. Like, to be, like, to or be just- able to do the mental labor of, like, I I didn't do this well, but yeah. I am still, I know I'm still a person who like still has good values or whatever else. Like, I think that takes a lot yeah. of like self-awareness yeah. or or well, just that... like, go ahead, it's, it's not, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but like, it's, I think people are afraid to be wrong, but it's not that bad. You guys, like yeah. everyone's wrong all the time. It's not, it's not that it's not as scary as people think it is to just be like, oh shit, I fucked up. Like, that's all you have to do. And then we could all move on. We just, you just learn from it. That's all it is. It's like you admitting that you need to learn something. Right. Adaptability is like such an important quality for success. And yet it's like, right now it's like, oh no, no, no. You need to already be there. You can't adapt to improve. You need to already be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) And like, I don't think it says anything about you if you're wrong. Like no, it says more all. about you. Yeah. It shows more character when you can admit it that admit that you're wrong. Yeah. And I think it's people with a fragile ego who mm. have a hard time admitting that. And it yeah. makes me want to psychoanalyze and figure out like what happened in your childhood, Tom Sandoval. Oh my god! I mean, privately doing it in my mind all the time, <laughs> but with I everyone. But with everyone. Ni- Nineteen ninety-five, I think, is when something happened to Tom Sandoval. But... <laughs> yeah, what was the inciting incident for whatever's going on now? <laughs> I don't know, but I think Jim Carrey is related somehow. Like Jim, a Jim Carrey movie was like the number one movie in the box office at whatever time. <laughs> Tom Sandoval oh had something God. happen to him. I love your posts when you find like outfits he's wearing that are exactly like Jim Carrey's <laughs> outfits. <laughs> like, yeah, I really truly feel like he's trying to like mimic or like he's adapted his own personality <laughs> after Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey somehow. Like, I don't know. Yeah. He dressed up as him at Bravo Con. Yeah, Dumb yeah. and Dumber. I remember. I remember he that. Talks yeah, talks about him a lot, and like even like some of his mannerisms and like gestures. I'm like, oh my god, I get so <laughs> freaked out, know. like of how witchy I am sometimes. Because <laughs> like, I things, love it. I love it. Like things, I'll think of things, and then Tom Sandoval will do it, and I'm like, am I doing this or is he? Yeah. Like, There's things that you say Peterson. where I'm like, that oh. thing. I said that <laughs> and I remember because I was I felt bad about it and I'm like I just like, compared him to a convicted murderer like that was maybe <laughs> taking it too far but then he repeated it <laughs> oh my gosh Jenny I have Do a question for you me. like yeah. <laughs> kind of speaking on people who are on reality tv where like of course there's an edit and there's ways that like this footage is being curated to like push a certain narrative like what for you are the moments that are really telling that you're like you know this is indicative of your character and not just like producers trying to stir up drama either for Tom Sandoval or for like other people yeah that I mean that's actually kind of the biggest question I have like all the time when I'm watching I am always trying to figure out is this authentic is this produced 
And I am just constantly trying to put the pieces together. And I think the reason why is because I took anthropology 101 in college. <laughs> love that. Yeah, oh my good. God. Love. I had no idea what anthropology was at that time. I thought like, I was I doing... that score. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be something way different. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is like a reality show, but for like from the 70s, and it's like this native <laughs> tribe yeah. of indigenous people. And like this is an interesting. Yes. It was like the first reality show ever. <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly is fascinating. Humans and, are endlessly fascinating. Yes. Like that's why I love reality TV. Yes. It, and, yeah. and then the production side of it is another layer of fascination because you're like, not everybody has this media literacy that, you know, that yeah. we have that I'm assuming you guys have as well. It's like some people will even say, oh, but I'm watching this on TV. How can they be over here? I'm like, no, you did not. No, you do not think the person <laughs> on TV is actually doing that right now. Like what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Knowing how production works, like that adds another layer. But then also with social media, that adds in this whole other dynamic that really makes so much sense to me now as to why mm -hmm. Twitch and gaming are way bigger industries than the TV, movie, and music industries combined. Wow. Mm. Because That's if huge. you think about it, what it what they're getting, these gamers and people on Twitch, what they're getting that we're not getting on our side is they're making sure that they're finding ways for humans to connect while they're doing the same thing. Like they're playing the same game, but like they're what there's people watching people play a game. That's like right. the equivalent of people watching our podcast, talking about a reality show. You know what I mean? Like it's right. not much different, yes. but I think we're a little bit slower on the technical side where like, we're not, we should have something like Twitch where we're we're streaming the shows, we're talking about them, and we're interacting yeah. and chatting with people. And that's what people like. They want to feel like yeah. they're a part of a community. They want to feel like they're connecting with other humans. Humans. Yes. yes. <laughs> Not bots, nothing like, you know, electronic or automated. They want to know that there's someone on the other end. And as we keep progressing in the technical field, you know, that human connection just keeps fading more and more. So it's like people are willing to pay. And that's what it is. I'm yeah. also, like yeah. for me, like I didn't, I didn't have cable, like didn't know much about Bravo, but I'm like, put some fucking respect on Bravo's name for what they do with Watch What Happens Live. Cause like oh, yeah. as someone who's like, in the past few years sort of like been initiated into this universe it's so smart the way they have people like facetime in from home to ask their questions and they have polls because they think it's like yeah it's like we want to interact with humans and we want to feel listened to and if yeah. we get to vote and then see the way the percentage ticks like change like and it's live and we know that there's other people mm -hmm. doing this simultaneously like it just like scratches that connection itch in yeah. such a I, smart way yeah yeah i also love like you watch how someone reacts to something and sometimes it's so shocking and surprising that you're just desperately wanting to unpack it and and being able to like find someone who wants to unpack it as much as you want to mm -hmm. is so thrilling and exciting. And that's like, I mean, most of my friends, I feel like we, we, we all connected, we all became closer because we do text each other about Vanderbump rules or whatever reality show. So yeah. it, it kind of, I don't know, it's finding someone who's surprised by the same thing you are or feel the mm -hmm. same way about someone's behavior or actions that, that, you know, you do is, is a really like bonding thing for me. <laughs> yeah. And you can't just order that online anymore. I mean, yes, you yes. can kind of, but like kind of yeah. in the traditional <laughs> online ordering sense, you can't just be like, give me that shot of dopamine that goes straight to my yes. brain because somebody interacted with me. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, can't fake. Right. I love automate that. Totally. 
And it was great. Like I used to love when I was like working for Tom, I used to love going on Reddit and reading everything because <laughs> I kind of do get that like special peek behind the curtain. And then I'm seeing what they are saying. And when they're like super accurate, it's it's like magic. You're like, how did you yeah. know that? Yeah. And that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm kind of grieving right now that I can't participate in Reddit as much because sometimes I'll see something about me and then I'm like, oh, I this is gonna affect me so i'm just gonna turn my computer off and that that's like a thing that i'm like oh i one day i'll i'll be like strong enough to come back <laughs> yeah. and you go in like anonymously and just f shit I, up. I do <laughs> oh god no actually <laughs> i will okay it's so... the best actually <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know. have I'm like Reddit people are smart. They're gonna find out it's me. <laughs> They're too smart. They're way They're too smart. smart. <laughs> They're way too smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it really is. There's like something like I always was like The Bachelor is Monday Night Football for a different demographic, where it's like yeah. it's the exact same thing as sports. It's this community. Mm -hmm. It's ritualistic. It's this yeah. time yeah. once a week that reminds you to connect with a certain group of friends. Mm -hmm. It's this like, like shared consequences knowledge. are real. It's yeah right. like sports game if your team loses it's like crushing for the entire city like when you know your favorite bachelorette gets kicked off i'm mourning i'm like please let her be the bachelorette next like please let her be on batch in paradise like it's it's kind of the same thing is there anything that you guys want to talk about before we go oh wow i don't know you go first amanda <laughs> Mm. Okay, so I'm I'm really trying to expand my Bravo verse. So you know, I've done Housewives of Beverly Hills, recent season of Salt Lake City, of course Ooh. Vanderpump. What are some of the other? Oh, and Summer House, I fucking adore. What are mm. the other like for you as someone who's like covered this so extensively, like? Mm what are the ones that like to this day still you find very entertaining or thought-provoking i think shaw's of sunset okay is under appreciated okay and i think actually it's starting to get recognized more because now it's on peacock i believe so you can go binge it there. That's one I recommend. Mm. I kind of like the non-housewife shows, like Vanderpump, obviously, Summer House. I used to be into every single Below Deck, but Captain oh. Sandy kind of ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why don't you like Captain Sandy? <laughs> oh my God, why would I like her? She's the <laughs> worst. <laughs> She's a micromanager. She kicked, she fired <gasps> Anna for having a weed pen. <laughs> Unacceptable. But, yeah. She just sucks. That's amazing. <laughs> but Can the I... new captain Wait. is really yeah. good on Below Deck, Captain Carrie. So I have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to admit this. I can't believe I'm admitting this. I like Captain Sandy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you too. It's okay. I won't hold it against you. Even Kate Chastain likes Captain Sandy. And I'm like, yeah. why? Oh, I love Kate. I'm obsessed with her. Oh my gosh, I love Kate too. So what shows have you watched so far, Amanda, on Bravo? Since um it was pretty much like at my old job. If ever we were interviewing someone, it was a big like binge catch up. So I watched some Southern Charm. Oh I gosh. watched oh yeah it's like wait what do you oh think my. about that because i have i have like a visceral reaction to southern charm similar to vanderpump rules oh Ugh. southern charm sorry sorry no no go no go ahead no, no, take it away and please no we it's were talking open. about <laughs> we were talking about um like bravo and weed they uh what's her name the the young Catherine woman who is that no not Catherine or no wait maybe it is Catherine yeah she she like had to go to rehab because yes. they they caught her with with weed yes. and then by like the ninth season they're having like a weed dinner and she's yes. like this sucks for me yeah it's insane right I, it's and insane she still yeah. doesn't have custody of her children oh damn 
Yeah. I mean, That's, there's like yeah. other stuff going in. Yeah, going she on did there. say. It's, the it's, whole show is so crazy. The executive producer yeah. is Whitney, who's on the show. His mother on is the Patricia. show. And <laughs> when they started the show, he was sleeping with Catherine, who was 20 years younger than him, who was yes. getting pregnant with Thomas, who was like, who was like 30 50 years older. Yeah. It's what? Sick. Oh my it's God. Sick. It's so. <laughs> It's, it's a crazy sick. documentary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a wild, then, wild documentary. It's like I watched that like I watched like Capturing the Freedmans where I'm just like, this is horrifying and I can't stop. It's like Fire Festival or like Woodstock yeah. 99. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm still scarred from those documentaries. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I do think, Anne, one time we were talking and you were like, like kind of, we were like, we were definitely high. And like, we were like, <laughs> it's Vanderpump based anthropo anthropology and like reality TV. And like, Anne, you said something about like, basically like thinking about Vanderpump as having documented these people's lives. And like, obviously it's not a documentary in certain journalistic senses, right. but it is like, it does document these people. And it's yeah. crazy to think about how this is like the first generation of that. Like, yes. I think of course yeah. we're seeing that like, there's some real mental health, like dangers to the internet these days, but like, Oh my, the studies that the scientists are going to do yeah. about the effect this of being is, on reality TV. Yes. This is like the first generation where people are actually seeing themselves. Like, I feel like when they're shooting the show, they don't realize what they look like are perceived like to other people. And then they see themselves. And then by the reunion, they're like, I fucked up. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But also it's like, I don't know, there's something about, and maybe this is just like from like disordered eat, eating POV, but like, it's like when, like when you see people like show up to the reunion, like so much skinnier and like, I, I, there's just something about like knowing that yeah. there's like fucking egregious, really punishing environment where like for everybody, but like, especially for women where it's like, if yeah. you've seen yourself on reality TV, God forbid you like sit comfortably and like there's a roll on your stomach and you just see these yeah. people who have so clearly like hyper analyzed their bodies and then accordingly like starved themselves. Like there's something really fucking dark about that. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. Very. There's so yeah. much, there's so much darkness in the reality world. And I don't know why I'm fascinated with stuff like that, but I'm like, let me see what is happening here. Yeah. Who is, like, I just want to know how to avoid that kind of stuff. I have three children yeah. and as a parent, I'm like trying to figure out how to navigate this world and make sure I educate my children on every single thing possible so that they can yeah. make the right decisions and know how to stay out of trouble and stay safe. Totally. Like it's, it's like, oh, I was just going to say it's, it's my same fascination with like true crime where you're just yes. like, I know this is horrible, but I can't stop because A, I have like my own traumas, but, and I feel like I'm being able to like investigate this world and this scary mind that I'm terrified of so that I could avoid it yes. as, at all costs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna ask Jenny, like when you podcast, do you ever think about like your like this as media that is available that your kids could potentially consume one day? Like like you know the phrase like write like your parents are dead. Like yeah. do you feel yeah. like you in any way change the way you approach this with kids? No. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I don't Hell because yeah. I well, like there's certain things that I wouldn't tell my four-year-old, but I would tell <laughs> my 14-year-old, you know? And so yeah. I know that my four-year-old and five-year-olds aren't listening to my podcast. They might when they're older, but I know that whatever I say, I it's authentic and genuine and I feel it in this moment at this time when it's recording. I may not feel the same way later on, but yeah, I don't feel like there's anything that... I mean, there may be some things where I'm like, I wish I didn't say that, but <laughs> I also... Yeah, that's natural. I control everything. I can literally just go back and delete it. And granted, some people <laughs> could like screen record it or something. But at the end of the day, I have the ultimate control over what's out there. So I'm not really worried about it. Yeah. Totally. Oh, what about amazing. you guys? Are you guys like, do you worry about what? Actually, you know what? My mother has made comments to me. She said, I swear <laughs> too much. 
I was like, uh, Kyung Sun, uh, hello, this is not even for you. <laughs> She's like Jenny Pot. Oh my god, Asian Asian, Asian mothers are brutal. I oh can attest to that. Like, <laughs> Jenny so Pot, you judgment. swear too much. I'm like, <laughs> maybe too much for you, but you're not my audience. So back yeah. up, lady. Truly, Why are you truly. listening? You don't even know what I'm talking yeah. about. Get out of here, mom. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like the underwear company company parade. Like I submitted like through my personal Instagram because I like I just really liked them. Like they're very size inclusive, nice materials, etc. So they were just a brand that I was like, I really fucking like them. Like was like became an ambassador. My mom was like, Amanda, if you post pictures of yourself in underwear on the internet, you're gonna get a stalker. And I was like, Mom no like I was like mom you should see the gorgeous women of the internet like there are so many like nobody is gonna choose me to stalk like that is not gonna our, happen what is it our patreon <laughs> yeah I'm like, well our, our patreon is literally you could pay a dollar to see uh upskirt photo shot of Amanda <laughs> and I photoshop it to like a different so like for Easter she's like She's like the upskirt Photoshop with like a Easter bunny being like, oh no. <laughs> it was just like our first ever photo shoot when we were getting ready to like pitch the show or like have an iPhone on like, you know, like a colorful wall down the street from us. We're using the self timer and then we go through the photos and like, I'm wearing like, Anne dressed me in an awesome fit because like <laughs> Anne is fashion extraordinaire. She's a thrift store oh, goddess. Like, and I'm like, I'm a you. doll, put me in the good clothes. But then the way I was posing, you could see I was wearing these bright pink underwear. Yeah. <laughs> it was like like 75% like, of the photos were useless yeah. because of yeah. me. <laughs> and we oh, spent no. all day taking these photos and we're like, oh, we can't use three uh, quarters of this. <laughs> isn't that the worst? Oh my gosh. But Amanda and Anne, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you more. Please tell us where we can continue to get to know you both more. Amanda? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sure. Um, we we signed an NDA wherever you get podcasts. We're on Instagram. My personal Instagram is Lifford the Big Red Dog, and I'm gonna just say this for Anne has a cameo. She does phenomenal work. <laughs> She does phenomenal work. She's a natural born performer. She's funny. She's creative. So I'm going to say like, plug the you. shit out of Anne's cameo yes. because it's worth you're every, so every cent you could possibly pay. I love oh my cameos. God, so They're my favorite. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> um, my Instagram is M-I-K-I-A-N-N-M-E-D-D-O-X. Mickey Ann Maddox. Ann Maddox was taken. So I did my full birth name. Mickey's my Japanese name. So. Thanks again, everyone. Until next time, stay lit.